Hello, everybody. So this is Star Trek Panic, and uh, I just wanted to get a quick how to play video up this morning uh, because tonight is game night. I wanted to see if I can get this up out there so that people coming over might watch it and we can just jump right into the game when they get here. So I don't have a ton of time. I'm just going to see how quickly and efficiently I can do this. So this is Star Trek Panic. And uh, in Star Trek Panic, we're all going to be a member of the original Star Trek series. So we're either going to be Captain Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Scott, Chekhov, Sulu, Uhura. Um, so each, uh, each of the members has a special power that's going to help you along the way. Um, if I, were, I was thinking of playing a solo game and I would be Spock. So with Spock, when you draw new threats, he can actually take three out of the bag and pick two. So you can kind of control the threats coming out at you during that phase of the game. It's kind of cool. You'll understand that more as I as I explain. So let's say I'm Spock. Then uh, in a one-player game, I would get uh, six cards dealt to me. Uh, there's a different amount of cards per number of players. You can play one to six players. In six-player game, everyone gets four. Three to five-player games, everyone gets five cards. And in a one to two player game, everyone gets six cards. So you're going to get dealt cards, and these all do various things. So you're going to get um, ships coming to attack the Enterprise uh, throughout the game. And so there are cards that will attack. Uh, so like this card, you'll be able to hit any one target in any medium range facing. So the facings are explained by this reference card. So anything, um, you know... So the, the Enterprise will actually move. You can maneuver it. So anything in the forward or the front facings and then the side facings and then the rear facings. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm pretty sure every card does either side and so you pick one. So this, if there was any token in any medium range, you could hit that token, one of those tokens, for one damage. Um, then we have other attack cards that hit other specific quadrants on the board. So on the board we have long, medium, and short range. So you're going to get cards that are attacks, you're going to get cards that do special effects. You know, so this direct hit says play it with a phasers card to destroy the target. So it wouldn't matter how much defense value that target has, you would just destroy it if you play it along with that direct hit. On your turn, when you play cards, you get to play as many cards as you have in your hand if you want to. You're also going to, there's also security team cards, which reduces damage from borders. What happens is if a threat gets close enough, gets into short range with the Enterprise, the shields are down, um, then they become a border and they immediately will attack for their current defense value. So when a, when a, when a ship first comes on the board, they're given their maximum defense value. If you hit it once, it goes down one and so on. So whatever it is, when it becomes a border, it's going to damage the Enterprise for that much. So then there are also Tritanium and Dilithium. So Tritanium is going to repair one damaged hull, or you can use it with Dil Dilithium to repair one destroyed hull or shield. So you use Tritanium and Dilithium together to repair destroyed parts. You use them separately to repair either shields or hull. I'll get into that more in a minute. And that's basically all the different types of cards you're going to get. So these would be shuffled, you're going to get them dealt, and then that's your hand. Uh, so basically, the game, to start the game, you put the Enterprise in the facing between the one and six quadrants. These quadrants are all numbered. You're going to pull out these three uh, tokens, a Klingon battlecruiser, a Romulan battlecruiser, and a Tholian. Okay, so you're going to put these out in random spacing. I'm just going to mix up my hand in one, three, and five. So we'll put one, the Klingon battlecruiser, uh, three, the Romulan battlecruiser, and five, the Tholian. I'm sorry, I mixed up three and five. And now you're going to, they suggest uh, two specific missions for your starting first game ever. So the first mission is distress signal. Okay, so this mission you have you have five turns to complete it, basically, and so you're going to get a disabled ship token. It's going to go out there that you're supposed to go basically rescue. So you roll the die. I rolled a six, so it's going to go in quadrant six in long range. Okay, so then you must maneuver the Enterprise so that the disabled ship is in short range, and then you must commit these 
to credits. Then you get this reward, you complete the task, the mission, and you're good to go. So in a regular game, this is the intro game, just doing two missions. In a regular game, you're basically going to complete five missions. And if you want, you can increase that amount because there are quite a few missions that came that come with the game. So you can play the standard five mission or whatever, and it's kind of supposed to be representative of the Enterprise on its five-year mission to go exploring. It's kind of thematic in that way. So here we have the Enterprise, we have threats, we're set up, we're ready to go. So you randomly pick who goes first, or if you're playing a solo game, obviously, you go first. In your turn, you're going to draw up. So if you have less than what your starting hand was, in, this, in my case, six, I would draw up to that. So this is my first turn, that doesn't matter. Reveal new mission, first turn, that also doesn't matter. So if you have completed a mission the last turn, which is when you check mission status, you would then reveal new mission on the next player's turn. Now... Step three, you could trade a card. Obviously, in a one-player game, you wouldn't do that. But in a, any, any more than that, you could trade any single card with one other person. So you, they may have a card that you need your turn to destroy something or, or to repair something or who knows what you might need uh, during your turn. Then you can play cards and maneuver. Okay, so this step, you can play as many cards out of your hand as you want on your turn. Also, maneuvering. You can do one maneuver per turn. And you can do it... Uh, in any order. You could play two cards, maneuver, play two more cards, etc. So maneuvering, there's there's um, basically two things you can do. You can either rotate um, the Enterprise one, one facing, or left or right, or you can move forward. Moving forward uh, only does one thing. The, the Any tokens in your forward facing are going to move closer to you one quadrant. So you don't actually move the Enterprise, you move the objects in, in that are in front of you towards you. If there's anything in the side or the rear, they just stay there. Okay, so it's kind of fortunate that this was rolled as a six because then we don't even have to maneuver the Enterprise. We just move forward, or we don't have to rotate, we just move forward. So we can get to it in two turns instead of if it was over here, it would take like four turns. Okay, so you have to go one turn maneuver, one turn maneuver. One turn maneuver forward, one turn maneuver forward. So four total turns to get the Enterprise maneuvered towards the abandoned ship or uh, disabled ship. So you're going to play cards and maneuver. So step five, you check the mission status. Have you completed the requirements of the mission? If not, you uh, move on. And uh, then step six, threats move and fire. So now these threat tokens are all going to move one quadrant closer to the Enterprise and they're going to fire. Now they're all fire for exactly one hit. So what happens is you've got shields, shields up at the beginning, and then you've got hull. So while the shields are up, damage goes to the shield. So you're going to take one of these tokens and you're going to put it on the shield to indicate that you've taken a damage. This turn you would get damage here, damage here, and damage here. Okay. After you take, when you take a hit on something that's already damaged, you destroy it. So the next turn, if I have not destroyed this ship yet, it's going to hit this shield again and destroy it. So basically that shield's gone now. All right, so if I don't use a, at this point I would have to use a dilithium and a tritanium to get that shield back. But if I were able to use a, whichever one repairs shields, um, before this was destroyed, I could just play that single card and I would take off the damage on it. So there's damaged and destroyed. So for the hole, if you were to get hit, so if the next turn this guy uh, oh, so if this guy moved here, fired, he would destroy the shield. If I didn't destroy him or repair the shield, the next turn he would move and fire. Now there's no shield and the hull would take a damage. Actually, he would be a border at this point. I'll get into that in a second. But when a hull takes damage, it's going to take this token. You just slide it onto the piece there. And then if it goes one step further, the hull is destroyed. They've got these pretty cool destroyed overlays. So you just put that right there on the Enterprise and that part looks destroyed. Okay, so if you take hits on destroyed hull, at that point, you're actually going to take a card from the deck and remove it from the game. So you're losing resources that can help you win the game. So if, of course, in a, in a five mi a mission or longer game, losing cards out of the deck, which you reshuffle once you've discarded all, everything uh, and you've run out of cards, you just reshuffle and start drawing again. So, you know, you might lose some very precious cards throughout the game if you get hit like that. So, um, but if a ship enters short range and there are no shields, it becomes a border. And what happens there is you're going to apply the defense value as damage. 
So in this case, if I hadn't hit this ship at all before this turn and that shield was gone, it would hit me for three. So let's say it went one, two, the shield was gone, and now it's going to hit me for three. It's just going to be damage, destroyed, discard a card. So I would apply all three all the way down. So if, if that was already destroyed when that happened, I would be discarding three cards out of the deck. Okay, so that's how threats moving and firing works. Um, so, so basically, <laughs> this would happen pretty quickly, um, where on my first turn, I would maneuver forward one. So, so everything would move forward one, forward one, forward one, forward one. But then I would get eventually to the threats move and fire phase, and we would go forward one, forward one, forward one, and then they'd all fire. So they'd already be in short range. Um, so I would really hope that I would have gotten some sort of forward attack, you know, to especially damage the, the, the enemy with the three, because that's going to really hit me hard if it becomes a border. So, so that would just be on the first turn, they would already get in a short range. Um, but they don't become a border until the shield's down, which would take till the second turn, basically. So that's uh, play cards, maneuver, check mission status, threats, move, and fire. And then you're going to draw two new threats. So you dig into the Star Trek panic, panic bag where all the threats tokens are. You would draw two. And if they're ships, you would then roll a die to see which long range quadrant they go in. This would go in five. I would roll for the other one and they'd come out. However, since I'm Spock, I would get to draw three and choose which two of them. So I would obviously not put Core's Battlecruiser out there. I would put these two. So that's a very useful skill, even though this guy does two damage. But um, this is a special one. So what he does is after placement, after he's placed, all Klingon ships gain one defense value. I don't know. So would it be worse for that to happen or for this guy to do two damage? Probably this. Because even if I'd hit any of those, this guy would come out and it would just put them right back. That would stink. So I could hopefully destroy that other ship before it hits me for two. Although, no, it would hit me for two on the next turn. Anyway, so there's a lot of stuff to think about. It's a very, very, very simple mechanics, but a lot going on. Okay. So, um... If you ever get three pieces of hull damage, then you can no longer maneuver the Enterprise. So you would put this no maneuvering thing on it to remind you. Also, if a Tholian ship becomes a border, it doesn't do damage. It just also prevents you from uh, moving. It puts a Tholian web around you and the Enterprise cannot maneuver until you destroy that ship. These only take one damage, so you could probably destroy them pretty quick. But and in this, luckily in this turn to get Actually, so, hmm, yeah, I think I would have been able to get this into short range before that was able to take down a shield and uh, prevent me from maneuvering again. So I would eventually get this here. So once I'm in short range of the disabled ship, I would need to commit an engineering command credit. So uh, not all the cards, but a bunch of them have these uh, bottom parts to them. And it says, or commit as a science credit. So you can either do the thing the main thing or commit as a credit. So this is basically saying, oh, the science team is going to, uh, you know, has to work on this problem. So this is a, com a command credit and an engineering credit to um, help people on the disabled ship. So you'd have to have cards that have uh, engineering and command credit. So so you would just play these as, as you would any other card during your turn, but you would just commit them to the mission. So you'd put them somewhere near the mission I just had this over here, but I'd probably put them right here. So they're um, committing them to this mission. So if I get to, so then, so basically, yeah, I draw two new threats. So once I am in a turn where I hit check mission status, I would then go, look, okay, look, I got these credits. I'm in range one. So basically you're just defending until you get these credits out there. If you're already in range one, hey, I complete the mission. So um, oh, also, every time you get to check mission status, if you have not completed it, you then move the mission timer down one. If the mission timer gets to here, you failed the mission. All that means, I guess, in the introductory game, that means that you would kind of fail the whole game at that point. But you basically, you don't complete a mission. So, 
So you would have to start a whole new mission. So you've take, probably taken damage and things during that mission, and so it's just kind of wasted time, and now it's going to be harder to win the game, probably. So if you fail a mission, you just put it back under the pile and whatever. So, so I would play this mission until I hit check mission status, and I complete it, and I would put this number one token here. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter too much in the introductory game, because there's only two missions. So the next mission is this outpost defense. Uh, I haven't even looked at this card yet, so I'm not going to try to explain it for this uh, video, but that would be the next mission if I completed that. Yay, I, be, I win the introductory game, and I've probably learned just about everything I need to know about playing the game. Okay, did I forget anything? Um, there's a star base in here. Um, so the star base, when it comes out, if once you get to, uh, doesn't move, once you get in, in, get it in short range, you can repair two damage shields or rebuild a destroy shield. You can repair two damaged whole sections or rebuild one destroyed whole section and all players draw a card. Ooh, you get all three of these rewards. Ooh, that's awesome. So you repair shields, you repair whole, or you, um, draw and everyone draws a card. That's pretty awesome. Once that's done, the star base goes back into this card pile. So it's like, you know, finding the base and docking and repairing and everyone getting a little rest. Okay, so that's it. There's this force field token. I'm not sure what it does. I know it said in the manual, but it's something simple. I think it stops a ship from coming after you or something like that. Okay, so just a couple more things. Um, there's a comet that can come out as a threat, and what happens with the comet is you roll to see what quadrant it comes out in, and whatever's in that quadrant, it's going to come straight through, destroy any enemy ships, and then it's going to hit the Enterprise for two damage. Uh, so there you go, it's got the two on there. There's also threat tokens that are just events. So this one is an ion storm, if I can get it to focus. And so you roll a die, you apply one damage to the shield or hole in that section. So it's basically instant damage. Okay, quadrant six, boom, one damage to whatever, uh, to that quadrant, uh, that facing of the ship. So there's more of those. And so this is what a, uh, this is what a ship that can cloak looks like. It's got that blue around it. So, so it would come out, let's say you put it in two. Uh, it would come out, it would go there during the threats move and fire phase, it would just move forward and cloak. You just flip it over to say that it's cloaked. Uh, and then um, during the next move and fire phase, it would simply uncloak and shoot. Next turn, move forward, cloak. Next turn, uncloak, shoot. And of course, while it's cloaked, you can't shoot at it and it can't shoot at you. So that's pretty much it. So you... Um, you just go through the turn phases, which is very, very clearly marked on this turn order card, and you go until you complete the missions that you're, the number of missions that you have um, set out to complete, because uh, you could, a standard game is five, uh, but you can make it ten if you want. And these tokens, kind of nice, these tokens flip over to become more, so one becomes six. So you go one, two, three, four, five, then you can go six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or whatever. So you can make this game what you wanted it. Um, that's pretty much it. So hope you enjoy the video. And uh, yes, have a good one. Bye.